All right, welcome to the July 7th Historic Preservation Commission meeting. It is good to be back in person. My name is Klaus Ryman Phillip. I'm the Vice Chair of the Historic Preservation Commission, and I will chair today's meeting. The following guidelines are in place for meetings in the Council Chamber at the City Hall. Only the south entrance to the City Hall will be open for access to the building. For exiting the building, all accesses can be used. Air purifying machines have been installed in the chamber, hand sanitizer machines, and disposable face masks will be available. If you parked in the Sheridan Walker parking garage north of John Rex Elementary School, staff can provide a parking validation ticket to you. I would like to introduce the new CPUD administrative coordinator, Princess Bennett. I would also like to introduce the new, the new um, uh, thank administrative coordinator, Mark Michaud, for everything he has done to make our virtual meetings go smoothly these past few months. Uh, Princess, would you please call the roll? Klaus Raymond Phillip. Present. Aviv Farzane. Mary Jo Meacham. Present. John Milner. Present. Cassie Poor. Present. David Remy. Linda Scholes. Present. Ann Zacharitz. All right, thank you, Princess. Procedures for today's meeting are noted in the agenda. For the sake of time, I will ask uh, that any participants refer to this section if they are unfamiliar with the process. The agenda and documents are located at https colon backslash backslash okc.primegov.com slash public slash portal. You would then select the Historic Preservation Commission meeting, then click on the agenda item and the relevant documents will come up below the item. Citizens may also address the committee on agenda items by responding to chair's call for speakers during discussion on each item and signing the speaker's log out on the podium. All comments must be relevant to the item. The chair or presiding officer may, in his or her discretion, prohibit a person from addressing the committee and or remove that person from the council chambers if that person commits any disorderly or disruptive behavior. Please see the agenda for more information about these requirements. When called on, applicants and speakers will come to the front podium to speak. Only one person at a time should come to the podium. Speak into the microphone, please, and identify yourself and provide your address for record when you begin speaking. Address your comments to the committee. Um, limit your comments to three minutes, please. Written comments received more than 24 hours before the meeting were shared with the commi uh, commission members. New materials can be shared during today's meeting. Regarding certificates of appropriateness, when an application is approved after a 10-day protest period has expired, the historic preservation officer will mail the certificate of appropriateness to the applicant. City construction permits cannot be issued until the CA is issued. Please contact HP staff for final design review inspection or to withdraw items that will not be completed. Regarding appeal to Board of Adjustment, any person aggrieved by any decision granting or denying a CA may appeal to the Oklahoma City Board of Adjustments. All appeals shall be made within 10 days of the Commission decision by filing a written notice of appeal with a clerk to the Board of Adjustments. Uh, Katie, any news from the Office of the Historic Preservation Officer? Um, again, I want to welcome Princess Bennett. She's our new administrative coordinator for current planning and urban design division. So you'll be seeing her um, at these meetings. Mark Michaud and also Mark Collier have been helping over the last several months um, and have just done an amazing job with the transition from virtual to back to in-person, back to virtual, um, back to in-person now. So really appreciate uh, all of their heart, their efforts um, and support. And uh, wanted to also say farewell to Francis Lenders, who you all may or may not have ever interacted with directly, but he's the man behind the curtain for these meetings that turns on the lights and records and um, has everything up on online and on TV for people to be able to see us. He's retiring, uh, so we appreciate all of his service um, as well. And we know HP is his favorite of all the meetings, so, um, but that's all I have. All right, thank you, Katie. Oh, yeah. one, uh, one note, um, technological, uh, just a reminder on your buttons here in case we didn't get around to everybody to see your screen where the packet is, you're gonna hit computer to see the PowerPoint presentation that's up on the screen, you're gonna hit presentation. And then remember to turn your mic on and off when you're talking um, so that everyone can hear. 
Uh, and then you also have a button to turn your speaker here off and on so that you can hear everyone else that's speaking into a mic. That's all. All right, thank you, Katie. And uh, bear with us because um, since we've been back, they've updated the whole system up here. So this is our first time with the new technology. So um, we will try to figure that out as we go. Um, have the commissioners had a chance to review the minutes from the March meeting? Or from the, sorry, uh, June. June meeting. I'm off. Do we have a motion on that? I make a motion to accept minutes from the June 2nd meeting. All right, motion by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, second from Commissioner Milner. Please vote. And everyone should have a button on their screen to push yay or nay to vote. All right, that motion carries. Uh, Katie, anything from code enforcement? Nothing in particular to report. As always, the code enforcement um, packet is included in your, in your um, attachments. Uh, if you ever have questions about those items, you can contact staff or contact the Action Center for more information. All right, thank you. Do we have any um, continuance announcements or requests? We have two new requests for continuances. Uh, HPCA 21-89 has requested a continuance to September 1st, and 21-94 has requested a continuance to August 4th. Uh, we'll need to take a separate motion and vote on each of those items. Okay, so do we have a motion to continue item HPCA 21-00089 to the September 1st hearing? CA 21-00089. All right, thank you. That is moved by Commissioner Poor. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, second by Commissioner Milner. Please vote. All right, that item is continued, and one for item number nine, uh, HPCA 210094, to the August 4th uh, meeting. Do we have a motion? Oh. motion to continue HPCA 210094. Okay, moved by Commissioner Poor. Do we have a second? Did we have a second? Second. All right. Second by Commissioner Meacham. Please vote. All right. And that item is continued. Do we have any new um, requests? Uh, those were the new requests, sorry. Oh, we didn't sorry. have anything under the uncontested requests, and those were the, the two new requests. Gotcha. Uh, public hearings, then? No dilapidated structures and no National Register nominations for this month. Uh, we have two items on the consent docket. Uh, members of the commission can ask that either of those be pulled or ask any questions of staff um, if they need discussion, or we can uh, vote to approve each of those items as a group. All right, thank you, Katie. Um, have my fellow commissioners had a chance to review those two cases? And do we have a motion to approve those? I make a motion to approve the consent docket. Okay, motion by Commissioner Meacham to approve the consent docket. I'll second. All right, second by Commissioner Milner.
All right, and those two cases have passed. If you were here for uh, the two items on the consent docket, you were just approved, and you are free to uh, stay or leave, uh, however you like. All right, um, moving on to cases for individual consideration. Uh, items 1, HPCA 210014. This is located at 3028 North Harvey Parkway, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application by Jefferson Laughlin for certificate of appropriateness to two install stairs elective. And the commission has seen this application twice previously. Uh, the commission has approved some other items, including the installation of an additional driveway. The so the applicant is out of continuances for this meeting. Uh, the commission will have to either approve or deny uh, the proposal. Uh, at this time, staff has not received additional documentation um, from the applicant as was requested at the previous meeting, providing further design details for the proposed work. So the staff report does recommend a denial. Okay, thank you, Katie. Is the applicant present? Okay, seems like they are not. Um, of my fellow commissioners had a chance to review this case, and does anyone have any comments? I've reviewed the case, and <clears throat> I agree with staff. I would make a motion to deny HPCA 21-00014 with prejudice. Is Commissioner Schultz, I'll second. And it does seem like there is still some outstanding information that we would need probably to make a motion to approve. Um, and it seems like the applicant is not here, so do we have a motion? Um, I'll make one more call for the applicant. Would you like to be here? Yeah, so do we have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Motion by uh, Commissioner Meacham, second by Schultz. Commissioner Schultz. Could you hit your second? Um, I think we're waiting on. I think we've got the, the wrong item selected in PrimeGov. We'll get that cleaned up in the minutes so um, okay, that the vote and the motions are reflected on the correct item. Okay, so we have a second by Commissioner Schultz. I think we're waiting on the... All right, let's try that again. Got a motion by Commissioner Meacham. We have a second by Commissioner Schultz. Okay, and that item is denied with prejudice. Um, item two, HPCA 21-00040. This is located at 524 Northwest 16th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6. Consideration and possible action on application by Garrett Moore for a certificate of appropriateness to two construct garage elective. Uh, the commission previously saw an application, saw and approved an application to demolish the previously existing garage at this property and has reviewed once previously an application to construct a new garage. The, application, the applicant has made several revisions to the design based on the discussion at the previous commission meeting. Uh, staff report does still recommend a continuance uh, with some remaining concerns about the overall height and proportion of the proposed garage. Uh, but I believe the applicant is present uh, to further discuss the proposed design. All right, thank you, Katie. Is the applicant present? Okay, if you could state your name and address, and I will turn it over to commissioners uh, for any questions they might have. Can you hear me? 
Um, I live at 524 Northwest 16th Street, and I just first wanted to go over some of the changes that we've made um, to our original um, design. Uh, there's been one other rendering that is not going to be shown today uh, because we have also made changes to that one. So um, after the first rendering, we shortened the overall height uh, by a little bit over three feet. We added um, a hip roof on the front and a gable end on the back per staff recommendation. We made the structure a true, a true one and a half story structure, uh, which is basically the height of the wall from the floor to where it meets the roof cannot exceed three feet. And so our walls on that second story are three feet tall. Um, we added fenestration and we lowered the ceiling in the garage. Um, after our second rendering, we uh, had added a dormer. Uh, we, current, we used to have a dormer on the top of our um, second story and we have a picture of that and we do plan on someday um, asking to add that back. Um, and we have proof of that as well. So we figured a dormer on the garage to match would be fitting. Um, so we, um, to our second rendering, we had a meeting with staff and we had made, we made the dormer smaller. It had four windows on it and we took it down to three windows to match that window on the second um, story. We uh, made sure that the roof came down below the dormer to split up the, diff the um, area between the garage door and the dormer. Um, we centered a window on the south elevation facing our back neighbor and added another window for symmetry. We added a window on the east elevation going up the stairs. We made the pitch of the gable and the dormer pitch the same. We added corner boards. We added windows in the garage on the west elevation facing our neighbor's fence for fenestration. We labeled the nine foot ceiling height for clarification in the garage. We labeled um, the floor plan where the three foot wall meets the roof line. Um, and we, our current garage is 675 square feet of footprint, which means the square footage of the inside is 593 square feet. The square footage of the additional half story is 503 square feet. Um, appraisable square footage is where you have five feet, I believe, of headspace, which makes our appraisable square footage of the half story 383 and a half square feet, which is just under two thirds of the garage square feet. Um, I wanted to go over the, the lasting uh, staff issues with our design. Um, so the proportions of the garage, specifically the space between the top of the garage and the eave. So a fix that we have, um, we've already taken the roof line to split up the dormer and the top of the garage, but something that we could do is extend the soffit in order to make that space even smaller. Um, the grouping, uh, on the staff report it said that there was still an issue with the grouping of the three windows. Um, they're made to mimic the windows on the front of the house. Um, staff recommended in our last meeting to take it from four windows down to three, and so we did that. Uh, we're fine with adding an arch, just like the window on the second story of the house, and that would also mimic the window on the current historic garage. Um, so if that's something you would be interested in, we can do that as well. Um, the last thing is the um, single two-car garage door versus two uh, singles. Um, that is the one thing that we are asking for consideration on. Um, we do have a list of uh, 100 addresses in Mesta Park that do have one single um, two-car garage door. Um, and I have that list if y'all would like it. But that is the one thing. Um, we've had our trailer stolen out of our driveway, so this is that made us make this move to build a new garage. So thank you for your consideration. All right, I appreciate it. And uh, just to clarify, um, you said that you had made some additional changes that we don't have in the staff report or everything that you've changed is reflected accurately in the staff report? I'm not sure. Do they have that second um, 
I, I think that everything that that you've submitted is, okay. is what's in the staff report now. I don't think okay. you've made any additional changes since this packet went out. No, okay. I just didn't know if they had that yep. second. Okay. Yep. So y'all okay. should have all three renderings that we have uh, made for this crush. All right, I appreciate it. Um, and you can say Amy, what's your name? It's Eden. Oh, Eden, okay, yes. apologies. So um, do we have any, uh, do my fellow commissioners have any questions on this proposal? from staff is plans to reduce the height um, but she's saying she reduced it so are you saying in, in addition to what she's already reduced Katie is that the staff's recommendations so staff was concerned that the the proportions of the garage still look very tall and look much taller than a, a one story or even some one and a half story garages um, that may to some extent be because of as we said that space between the top of the garage door and the the eave of the roof. Uh, that's just not what we typically see and seemed out of proportion. Um, so, I mean, the height is 20 feet, which is, is tall for a garage. Um, a, you know, a one story, we often see them at 13, 14 feet tall. Um, you're gonna have more height to get it to a one and a half story. But um, they, the ceiling height for the garage and then the space from the garage ceiling to the second floor to the eave just seemed excessive. Is the uh, height of the garage itself higher than eight feet to accommodate the stairs to the second floor? The height of the garage itself, yes. Um, the ceiling in the garage is nine feet to accommodate for an eight foot garage door and then for the stairs as well. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty much in agreement with staff. I, the, when we talked about the massing and everything from the front, I, I, I don't know if I, I, I would just suggest a, um, maybe a simpler thing. I don't suggest going to the front of the house and copying the arched window. Um, I mean, more traditional is just a, you know, two sets or something like that. It, it looks kind of uh, dominating from the top, but I agree it is tall. And then as far as the massing, I understand that you're, you're trying to increase the use of the second floor with a dormer, but that, that's really not a traditional form for a, you know, a, a garage in this neighborhood. So. I would agree on this particular case. I would normally, um, you know, it's kind of a strange in between where it's not a single story, it's not a two story. I mean, at this point, my fellow commissioners would probably disagree with me on this, but um, you know, if you're going to add the second story, it'd almost uh, be more appropriate to add a you know full story to it. Um, but of course, that's also not what we're discussing here. So um, I'm not sure what the other options are there. I know you're trying to utilize some of that space below. Um, we can't really design it for you. I agree with the comments on the windows. I think the three windows seem a little bit busy. I'm not opposed to having dormers in the garage, but perhaps simplifying that. Um, the guidelines state that the garage should be secondary to the house, and I think you know having the same kind of window pattern kind of uh, replicates a house. I think a simpler window pattern would um, kind of fit that better. Uh, but those are kind of my thoughts on it. Any other comments from my fellow commissioners? It's, it's still, the footprint is still over the, I mean, is there a, um, and Katie, maybe you can address this, but it's over the 450. Is this, how do we address this in this particular situation? Um, the, the footprint is consistent with what the guidelines allow for this site um, because it allows 450 square feet or 5% of the lot. And this is a very large site. So, and I believe they're consistent with the footprint of the historic garage. Is that 
accurate or am I misstating that? No, we are just consistent with the 5% yeah. of our lot. Regarding the double overhead door, I, you know, we, that's something that we've approved quite a bit in the past, so I don't you know, personally have a big issue with that, especially, I mean, it's in the back, um, it's on the corner, so as far as that item is concerned, personally, I don't have a big concern with that. I don't know about my fellow commissioners, but those are my two cents. So, staff, if, uh, the applicant saying that you consulted on the on this design to get to this design. I mean, are we? Um, I, I guess I'm. I'm just asking. You know, if you were, if 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 they worked with you, did we get to something that you felt like was? Uh, reasonable, but I believe that when I'm reading the staff report that we're not quite there. Were there other suggestions? Were the suggestions that uh, that were included in the specific findings, were those discussed? And it sounds like that you still, we still didn't reach a consensus. Yes, so the, the concern about the two single car doors versus one double width garage door, um, as they've stated, they'd really prefer to stay with one door. So, so that's one of the things that staff had raised previously that, that was unchanged. Um, we talked in the meeting quite a bit about the overall height of it and um, kind of trying to figure out why there was such a large space between the top of the garage door and the, the eave of the roof and doing um, whatever could be done to minimize that. We talked about um, when you look at the historic garage, uh, there was there's a a wide band of trim that runs under the roof line between the garage door and the roof and that perhaps something like that would at least reduce the appearance of that that spacing adding that trim piece there um, but um, they, they have made changes since the first time it was seen and they did make changes after the, the um, more recent discussion with staff but there were still some some outstanding things we talked about changing the windows in the dormer um, I actually can't recall exactly what it looked like the first round, but came back with the three um, windows and we still felt, as has kind of been said here, that the three windows at the different heights not aligning was a little busy for a, a garage. Um, Am I on or off? No. Is there a button? There's oh, a, okay, well, there I can you go. You're on. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so, I, I understand we've given a lot of, um, uh, we've, we've approved a lot of the single uh, garage doors, but I have two suggestions kind of in regards to that that would maybe make the scale um, uh, a, approach a, a, better, a, a better scale, which would be uh, to, lower the, to lower the height. So I'm assuming that some garage doors are seven feet tall. I don't really know a lot about garage doors, and some are eight feet. And so generally the historic doors are probably the seven foot doors because they're being put into eight foot interior things. My suggestion uh, would be to uh, use the, um, I don't know what you call it, the barge board that Katie suggested, is that what it's called, or cornice? The, that goes around under the eaves to reuse that uh, trim on the project and to reduce the height of the garage doors and to do, in this case, I think um, because of the size of it, that it would actually seem to be smaller in appearance if you did use the two single doors. So those are just some of my suggestions that might help um, bring the overall design into more of a compatible scale with other garages and the original garage since we know what that was so I'm looking at page nine of the staff report and it looks like there's an elevation and it looks like um, there's some sketches over that uh, do you know what I'm referencing so or? that that was just staff kind of experimenting with the spacing of the, the roof line and the garage that's not actually from the applicant. Um, gotcha, okay. Well, I think I um, agree with some of the, those comments. Um, yeah, I think putting a header or some kind of board ab above the door might help lower that distance between the eave and the overhead door. Um, 
honestly, in this case, actually, I understand uh, Commissioner Meacham's um, comment about having two separate doors and maybe that kind of breaking up the facade a little bit. I would almost argue if it stays at eight feet, it reduces that height between the top of the door and the eaves, so that might even help with the height. Um, I mean, maybe even extending the eaves, I don't want to design it for you, but that would kind of lower that um, eave as well. So it sounds like there's some good feedback here. I'm not sure if um, I get the sense that uh, the commission's probably not in a position where we could prove this design as shown, but um, you know, perhaps you have some good feedback um, to make some tweaks to the design, I'm sure with uh, staff assistance as well. Um, so if you'd be interested, we could continue this and you could have an opportunity to make some modifications or we could of course vote on this if um, my commissioners had any other comments or questions. Um, I would like to know if we do add that wide piece of trim across the top and lower. Um, oh. Was he used a little bit or the? Oh gosh, where was that? The faucet, just, is it the faucet? Just a little bit lower so that it, it, there is not as much space if that's something that could be administratively approved. If y'all feel that would work. Typic I'm not, yeah. Yeah, typically when, when there's this many kind of components that the commission's asking you to consider revising, that's something that we want to come back to the commission. Um, they can approve things with the condition that specific items be submitted to staff, but usually those are pretty clear. Check the box, you know, submit a different door, that kind of thing. Um, typically these kinds of changes we want to come back to the commission for them to see. So it sounds like the two items, my name's Garrett Moore, hey. wife, our husband. Uh, it sounds like um, the two notes are the overall height and then the single garage door. Is there anything else that needs to be addressed in regards to this? I think there's some discussion about the windows, maybe the windows. not having the three right. windows, yeah. And I think um, yeah, the two doors versus one, I mean, uh, yeah, which that can be discussed, but um, I, I know we mentioned it, uh, so just something to consider. Okay. I'd like to maybe just can continue the discussion around the garage door. Are we able to go back a slide or two? So that is the view straight up our driveway. It's a very steep incline. We've already had approval for a gate. You will not see the garage door. Mm -hmm. um, You'll see how you can kind of see in the, in the dirt, in the grass right there where I tried to back up my trailer. Um, our, we now have approval to widen our, our driveway, so we can accommodate for that. But our trailer was actually stolen out of the front of our house. So that is one of the reasons we want a single garage door is to accommodate for our work trailer. Um, but again, it's, it's going to be fairly noticeable, um, especially with the landscaping that we have plans, the landscaping that's already there, and then the, and the gate that we've already had approved through you guys. Um, so I, I definitely understand the concern for the windows, how we can change that, how we can add trim uh, to help with proportions. But I think the single garage door is one thing that we'd really like to continue the discussion, hear other people's thoughts on that. Um, that's just one thing that we're kind of, I, I think we really want. <laughs> right, if there's anything, and, and it's already been mentioned that we, we have approved those in the past. That was just a suggestion to try to get to a better situation so I'm not saying we would approve it but it's it's certainly probably the one thing that's negotiable so I don't agree with that I think um, the height is probably more important than you know I know we've approved double doors and I do see that configuration where you really only see a half of it so you know speaking for myself I don't think I have a, a big issue with that but I guess we just have to see the overall revised design and you know we'll take a look at that so so in regards to the um, space between the garage and the windows, we have changed that since we did our meeting with staff. We, we made the roof come down below the dormer um, in order to fill that space in a little bit. Um, we did have, our architect had four windows on there and we discussed with staff just making it three to match the front of the house. 
Um, so the only thing we were, uh, we were under the impression that we did not do was the two separate garage doors. Um, we thought we had addressed everything else. We can definitely add that wider piece of trim to make that distance up. Um, as we, far as windows, what do you guys recommend? Just personal thoughts on what would look more proportional or better. Would it be adding a single window? Would it be doing two? I think the idea behind three was to make the two on the outside a little bit smaller than the one in the front just to kind of match the front of the house. Um, but obviously we could do that a lot of different ways. We want to just make sure that the next time we're doing this, it's something that you guys want to see. Sure, I would suggest just a single window. Personally, I think that would just be a you know, simple, uh, appropriate design. So. I think when we talked before, we, we may have said uh, you know, either a triple set that are all uniform is what I was envisioning, or a pair um, that if you had, because it is a large dormer, and um, you know, I think you want to fill as much of that space as you can so that you've got the, the daylight coming in. But I think what we more typically see in a dormer is just a, a, either a pair or a triple set of windows that are you know, uniform height all the way across. Um, it sounds like our next meeting is our last one. Is there anything else we can, we can do? before then to make sure we get this right? Yeah, I think we've, we've mentioned four, I think approximately four items. I think the height seems to be a, a pretty, um, you know, pretty significant issue or finding a way to get the proportions a little bit lower. I think uh, that would be a, a pretty, um, you know, I think that would help you out a lot. I think the windows like we discussed and you can always uh, provide several options as well so if you're nervous about getting one option approved or you have a desirable option and maybe a plan B option that you think is more approvable, sure. you can always provide that as well. That way, um, if you are out of continuances, at least we have something we can review and approve one way or the other. So, so would you like to, uh, if we're going to continue, it sounds like um, we have, Katie, when would they need to revise? So we can continue to the August 4th meeting, in which case we would need revised drawings by Tuesday of next week or we can continue to the September 1st meeting. We'll have it by Tuesday. Okay, perfect. So that would be the August uh, 1st, is that correct? Uh, 4th, August 4th. August 4th, 4th that's okay. right. All right, do we have a motion? I would make a motion to continue HPC 821-00040 to the August 4th meeting. All right, motion by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? Commissioner Poor will second. All right, Commissioner Poor with a second. All right, thank you, Garrett and Eden, and we'll see you August 4th. Thank you, guys. All right, quick note before we move on to the next one, just to keep the meeting moving smoothly, I will um, ask the applicant who's present, and if you'd like to speak, you can come up to the podium and give your name and address, and I'll then turn it over to commissioners to ask questions, and uh, you'll have an uh, opportunity to respond to those questions. So um, we are on to item three, HPCA 21 -00041. This is at 500 Northwest 17th Street, Mesta Park, Ward 6, consideration of possible action on application by Chad Rice for a certificate of appropriateness to, one, remove historic side lights at rear and install new side lights and door required. Uh, this is a property where the um, historic door and side lights were in place and the door appears to have been stolen uh, while the property was under renovation. The applicant has proposed a new door to install uh, the, the historic side lights remain and appear to be consistent with historic windows that are also still in the property. Uh, the applicant has proposed removing the historic side lights and installing a new set of door and side lights uh, to match. Um, staff had suggested keeping the historic side lights and perhaps installing a, a simpler door that was just a fully glazed or partially glazed door uh, to be compatible with the uh, distinctive Munton pattern of the historic windows that remain on the house. Um, 
So the applicant wanted to uh, take this to the commission because staff didn't feel that we could administratively approve the proposed door as not as being compatible with the uh, historic structure. Um, the store is located on the rear of the property. It's not the front door, but um, you have the application before you, and I'm not sure if we have an applicant present or not, but. Um, Mr. Our Chairman? Yes, is applicant present? Can I, can I, is my? Yeah, if you'd like to come to the front and state your name and address. Is it required or elective? Is it required or elective? This is a point of order on one presentation that's required and one is it elective. Has it already been done? Um, the, I'll look to Angela. The agenda says it's required, but the staff report says it's elective. I believe it's elective. Okay, thank you. Okay. Accurate. All right, Paul, John. Okay. The door has not been replaced. Yeah. Okay. Could you please state your name and address? Uh, Chad Rice. The house address is 500 Northwest 17th. Uh, yes, when we first started the remodel process back at the end of last summer, I was driving by and noticed a big hole in the side of the house, so I had to go rush and get a piece of plywood. Um, at the time, it wasn't really pressing to move forward on it. Um, now I'm standing at a point where I'm getting a lot closer now that my garage is, has been erected and I'm close to getting my power to the old structure. And once I have power there, then I'm going to be ready to do all my interior finals. Now I'm at a point where it's important. I need to get a door on the house so that I can secure the house and remove the plywood. Um, my understanding from Ms. Yetter was that, you know, maybe we could do a, a single one light door, but that one of the things that was important was to try to match the dimensions of the components, the styles and the rails of the door. I've looked in numerous outlets that I buy doors from, and I cannot find anything that can match that old size and uh, dimension of the styles and rails. So what I proposed to do was to get a door that does have a craftsman style, a historic style to it, and my designer that has kind of helped me with the remodel and the other things that I've done with the progress, or with the, pro uh, with the uh, remodel said that there's no way that door will pass because those components don't match the components of the old side lights. So I went back to Ms. Shetter and I said, okay, obviously I can field make side lights to match this door style. And I can do the same styles and rails. I can do the same Munton pattern that goes with the door that was part of your packet. And so now I'm before you wanting to know, I can, I can certainly order a single light door, but the styles and rails won't match. Or I could make side lights that match a door that I order. So that's kind of where I'm at. Thank you. All right, I appreciate it. So, um, and this image, I guess, is that the original door or is that? Uh, I would assume that is an original door to the home. Okay, I got you. Um, do we have any questions for Mr. Rice? So that was the original door, you assume that means you don't have that door? No, okay. I searched dead people's stuff and I cannot find it. <laughs> okay. do you, sir, do you have a preference of which of those options would you prefer to do? I would prefer to do the more craftsman style door than the one light door and then build side lights to match that door. And you have the side lights, but to find a matching door to the historic side lights, you just can't find a door it is, to match. Right? Yeah, is it, when you say that, are you just saying that the bottom and the top styles, the well, rails on the top and the bottom? Well, and also the width on the sides. The width. None of the components would match if I did that. I mean, I mean, if the one on the bottom, man, I'm looking at the there's one picture. I mean, can you find one that, I mean, the, have you found one where the bottom rail is similar? It can be close, but it won't be exact versus if I, if I field build something on those side lights, it will match exact. Right. I guess 
I, the hesitancy is only because it's an unusual door. <laughs> and I sh I'm sure you wish you had the original. I, yes, I wish that we wouldn't be in this position. But. I, I, I don't know. I think that um, I would maybe prefer just the single glass door. And if you can't match the styles, then uh, are the railings. Uh, it, it just seems, um, I don't know. Maybe in the future something could be done. I don't know. It seems like a shame to take out the original side lights, but I understand your predicament. I was just thinking, not to play devil's advocate, but if you can rebuild the side lights, could you maybe build a uh, a door that just has a single light with the uh, rails and the styles that match? Or I, <laughs> I mean, so and something that's not operable, like a side light. My carpenter can field build that a lot easier. I mean, I, I've never asked him to try to build a door. Sure. And so my concerns are that when it comes to the components of a door, if something isn't you know, made by uh, an outfit, a place that I would normally buy materials from, that I'd be afraid that I may have issues with security in the, in the future. Any other comments from? No, that was my exact question about, you know, trying to construct a door that's similar to what your picture is. But I think that I would agree with Mary Jo that I think I would pres my preference would be to preserve the side lights since they are historic um, than trying to just give the feel of the historic nature of a, a new door. And a new door is replaceable. So, you know, if you have the side lights and you eventually, or someone found a door that, you know, matched it better, you can replace the door pretty easily. So I, I kind of agree with that. Um, I think maybe there could be some flexibility on the door, you know, if it doesn't exactly match the, you know, I mean, that's just, there's got to be a compromise somewhere, I suppose, on that. So um, Katie, that is something that could be administratively approvable, or I guess I'm trying to see if, let's see what kind of door was submitted. I guess there's several doors that were submitted maybe. But that is something that you could work with staff on, I believe, on a proposed door? Or yes, if, if the commission gives direction on this, the door that, that they want to, the direction they want to see the applicant go in, then that's something that staff um, potentially could administratively approve or you all could approve it with condition that they submit a different door to staff. All right, are we all pretty clear or do we want to um, do we know what that condition would be? Commissioner Meacham, maybe? Or? Are, are you, um, if, we, if we approve it with the condition of a single light door, are you willing to do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'll make a motion. I just need to look at the finding. Um, too many papers. Um, just a minute. Where is my? Okay, so get the right one here. Um, let's see. The historic side lights remain. No, no, no door has been. Uh, okay. Um, I would make a motion to approve HPCA 200075 uh, with the specific findings as noted by the staff report. This and is actually, sorry to interrupt, this is actually 41. I'm sorry. I'm 21-000041. Okay, well, it's, case. it's got a, another one on the oh, back. Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> I'm just reading. Sorry about uh, that. 41 on the front, 75 on the back. Okay, 41. Uh, you scared me. <laughs> um, okay, with the condition that um, that the door uh, have a single light, and uh, that you work with staff just to find the best the best one, knowing that it may not be exact exactly match what we what the historic door shows. So this mm, drawing, I guess, if you will comes from one of the door places that I order doors from. Right. 
to get my approval to put it in production, I have to sign off on it. So okay. I'm sure I can get another one of these that will show yes. the parameters of the styles and rails of the new. Right, there won't be any work. styles and rails. Well, but I mean on the sides, top no. and bottom, the actual sides of the door before you get oh, to the glass. Oh, right, yes, yes. That, so that you can at least know what the parameters of the yes. so sides you just of the top need, and bottom. Right, just need to bring it to staff. Sure, okay. All right, so we've got a motion by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? Commissioner Poor, a second. All right, Commissioner Poor, seconds. All right, thank you, Mr. Rice. You are approved with conditions. Great. Thanks, Commission. All right, on to item four, HPCA 21-00054. This is located at 3220 North Harvey Parkway in Edgemere Park, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application by Nancy Stapleton for certificate of appropriateness to one, replace windows, elective. The commission reviewed this application previously and actually approved it with the condition that the applicant provide additional documentation to staff uh, comparing the replacement windows to the historic windows and verifying that they meet the criteria for replacement windows. Um, based on the comparison that was made, it appeared that the styles and rails were noticeably thicker on the replacement windows, which creates a smaller glass area in the window and that the muntins on the proposed windows did not meet the guidelines for replacement windows. They are not true divided light. Um, so staff brought this back to the commission for further review. Um, we know that the existing historic windows in the dwelling are not typical for many of our properties and are um, much more difficult to find a, an accurate replication for those windows. So felt that this needed to come back to the commission for further review of of the differences between the proposed windows and the historic. All right, thank you, Katie. Do we have the applicant present? Please state your name and address. Curtis Stapleton and Nancy Stapleton, my wife. All right, thank you for coming back. And uh, I'm gonna open it up to questions from commissioners. Have you all had a chance to review the Revised window submittal. I, I would just like to hear, in your words, how the difference that you feel, the significant, I mean, the difference in what you're, you have found, because it sounds like you've made an effort. So just kind of describe what you feel that the difference is, if you were explaining it to somebody, so that we can kind of get a feel of how how different it is from what staff is saying you need to, or, you know, would be an exact uh, requirement, feel the exact requirement. Well, during the, the last um, um, speakings I had with the staff, there was only one thing left, and that was the true divided light as opposed to a simulated divided light. None of these other items have been spoken to to me except for that one so i thought we were coming here just to speak about divided light muttons as opposed to simulated divided I, light muttons. I, I think i when staff described the situation what i heard was is that uh even though they have to they write that in the staff report that it is not exact that Maybe we are there except for the muttons. Am I correct, staff? What I, what I heard what you saying was that it's difficult to find these windows, that it, they are different, but the one thing that might be in the way is still the muttons. Is yeah, that what you said? Yeah, you know, it is, um, the, the styles and rails are thicker, but I think looking at what they have and what's out there and available, I think that's, much less of a concern than the fact that the muttons don't meet the guidelines okay. for muttons on replacement windows. So, so I'm going to assume, and you can answer, have you searched for a window that has the true divided lights that is as close as you can get? <laughs> yes. Yes, ma'am, that is, that is correct. And um, you could not find one? That is also correct. If, if the 
if the idea is for me to go and purchase custom made windows with because I'm, I'm trying to put a thermal pane in the, the idea is, is to try to preserve and I, I understand we're historically preserving the outside but we are also historically preserving the inside because if this is a Frank Lloyd Wright style home and I there is some absolute beauty in this home inside it and I'm trying to preserve that and in preserving that I asked for thermal pane windows single pane windows right. Anybody, I'm, I'm going to be honest, anybody who puts right. in single pane windows in this day and time, it's just... Right. Well, it's I don't just, think they're asking for that. Okay. It's a true okay. divided light. But, 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 but it comes down to that true divided light. It, it, the only way you can get a true divided light thermal pane window is to go to a custom window. Right. And in that case, that's a $2,500 window. Right. Uh, we have... 30% of these windows do not even have muntins, exterior muntins. 70% right. do. So I know it's, it's more to the case of having divided light muntins. So I understand that. But again, you're still talking about $100,000? Right. right. I mean, oh. I, I have taken an interest in this case. Um, because because it's it's difficult and I feel like that um, uh, it's one thing when the uh, the owner is, is it appears that you're truly trying to do the very best you can I mean I would after looking at this and hearing the case before and reading it I would be willing to um, make a or make a motion to approve with a unique condition that the windows are not available and uh, plus cost prohibitive if they were custom. That, that would be my unique circumstance. Well, I'd like to, um, yeah, first of all, I agree with everything that you're saying. And you have a beautiful house. I walk past it all the time. So I appreciate you I'm trying sorry, to preserve you, it. You have a lot of, a lot of reverb coming in, in on your speaker. On I'm your... sorry. Can everyone hear me pretty well? Yeah. Uh, no, I was going to say, I agree with everything you're saying. And you have a beautiful house. Um, one suggestion I might make, which, uh, is maybe in a little bit different direction, um, but just, you know, you're replacing all the windows in the house. Is that correct, essentially? That's what we were attempting to do, yes. In that, in that case, I would almost suggest don't worry about the, you know, divided lights at all and just go with, you know, the, um, you know, the double hung, or I think, I believe it was a double hung. You know, just go with the window that you have and don't, you know, divide it whether it's true divided or you know the um, applied division so you just have the solid pane top and bottom and i think that would maintain you know more or less historical nature of the windows um, i think it would be honest to you know the design and that you're not simulating the division of the of the window uh, and you can still get you know um, off the shelf windows, so to speak, you wouldn't have to custom fabricate them. So those would be my suggestions. I don't know if my commissioners agree with I, that. I, I, would, I, would, I would agree. It's just a special situation where um, uh, I, I think a, a simple would be perhaps better than complicated. I do have a question. What are you going to do to the, uh, the picture window on the front. So absolutely it's nothing. That it, it's abso we have a, a wood window in the front of the house, which you see right here on this drawing. And we have a big picture window on the back of the house, which you can't even buy a piece of glass that size anymore. Okay. And we do not, do not uh, want to do anything to those uh, at all. Okay. That they, all we've done is uh, trying to preserve them with, with caulking and, and, uh, and preservatives. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so my suggestion would be to simplify the window. You know, you could go with the same window that you're proposing, just eliminate the division in the lights. And uh, I think that's something that, if we made that a condition, staff would probably be able to approve, so. And we, um, that's the window that they've already submitted for the windows that aren't currently divided, so that would just be as simple as, you know, circling and crossing out the appropriate items in what we already have from them. 
Does that sound reasonable to you? Or so so if, if I'm understanding correctly, I would not have to worry about the divided light. I could have just single pane windows in the style that I've already, thank you. Right, yeah. Okay. Do we I, have a, oh, go ahead. Uh, I would make a motion to approve HPCA 2100054. Let's see. Um, with this, I, I, I'm going to uh, change item two to um, uh, to say that even I don't know how to say this, but uh, while perhaps less than fifty percent may be deteriorated due to uh, replacement, or maybe that's already on there. It may exhibit pictures. I'll, I'll just leave that. I just want to make sure that we're saying that. Uh, you can't get parts, so even if they were deteriorated, they can't be replaced like wood. Okay, comparison rebuilds. Um, okay, so I'm going to say with the specific findings in the staff report, with the addition, the condition that all of the that that all of the windows will be um, that are shown as. Uh, one over one with divisions will be uh, changed to just one over one paint, one over one sashes. Is that correct? Yes. And you mentioned a unique circumstance earlier. Un okay. That with a unique circumstance that the window, um, the existing window is no longer available and um, it would appear that the owner has uh, completed uh, all possible research to find a identical or more similar window. Couldn't, couldn't find one. All right, thank you, Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? Commissioner Poor will second. All right, second by Commissioner Poor. Still waiting on a vote, or I believe. Nice. Yep. All right. Thank you, Mr. Stapleton. Yep. You are approved. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, item five has been withdrawn, as has item six. So we're on to item seven. HPCA 21-00086. This is located at 829 Northwest 42nd Street, Crown Heights, Ward 2. Consideration and possible action on application by Bob Stein, signed construction for Sean Reza McCoy for certificate of appropriateness to one, demolish garage elective, and two, construct garage elective. Uh, this is the first time that this application has been before the commission. The proposed garage a uh, new garage appears to meet all relevant uh, guidelines for new construction of a garage. Staff did recommend continuance um, with the, um, to provide opportunity for the commission to weigh whether the condition of the historic garage had been sufficiently documented as warranting demolition. All right, thank you, Katie. Is the applicant present? All right, if you'd like to come up and state your name and uh, Address. Hi, it's uh, Sean McCoy, 829 Northwest 42nd. And it's my contractor, Bob Sign, who actually has the answers to any questions you have. <laughs> All right, appreciate it, Sean. Do we have any questions from commissioners? Okay, so it seems like the big question here is on the um, condition of the existing garage. 
Looks like we have a recommendation for approval on the construction of a replacement garage with conditions. So do you want to speak to the um, condition of the garage you're planning on demolishing? Or? I mean, the reason we're building a new one is because I'm worried about this one just falling down on top of my kids. So. Fair enough. Uh, and it looks like we've got some pictures. Is it, um, what would you say, like, the main concerns are as far as the structure? Is it water or rot or the foundation, yeah. all of the above? Or? As you know, those garages were built way back in time. There's no actually footing underneath them. They sit on the ground. So we propose, like I've done several garages before, a 16 foot, 16 inch footing around to keep the water out. And if you look at the pictures, you can see how cracked the, the concrete is. And then on the sides, you can see the deterioration of all the woodwork on it, on the sides and, and the back. And actually, because of that, you can really see the tilt in the garage itself. So, and I see on one of the images, it looks like you can see daylight underneath the wall. Um, well, excuse me? It looks like you can see daylight in, from, from the inside to the outside. Yeah, there the is. Yeah. yeah, you can see some, <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, we, yeah, we see a lot of garages like this, and it's always the same issue. You know, either the, the bottom plate is sitting on the ground pretty much, Correct. or, you know, and it just rots up. And so to really even replace that, you know, yeah. It's difficult to replace. We're going so. back with the same footing, but we will probably have to scoot it over when we get our building permit away from the property line to make it uh, equitable with existing conditions. Because when these houses were built, there were never any fences there to begin with. And then people added fences, and there's only about that much room between the fence and the... Right. And the, and so we'll get, check the property line and move it over to where it meets... Okay, and so, yeah, it looks like the only condition on the other item to construct construct a new garage is that we approve the demolition, so that kind of goes hand in hand. I don't really have any further comments. I think it looks pretty straightforward. Uh, any of my fellow commissioners have any concerns or questions? My only question, and it's new to me, so what do we typically require to prove that the garage is not structurally sound and needs to be demolished? That's, I was just going to say maybe the contractor could write a letter to be included with some additional interior photographs. Would that be sufficient, Katie? Well, some of the photos are hard to see or maybe because there's a lot of clutter in the room, but uh, you'd spend more money almost trying to fix it right i don't think we're not saying that we're just saying yeah. in the file i think okay. usually we have interior some interior photographs and sometimes either a contractor or engineer writes a letter just describing the condition so that it would be included okay. with the that's application. not a problem okay. would that work katie yep that, that's i mean typical. because what they're saying is they need documentation verifying that the structure meets the for demolition so I would just say, I would make, we have to make two motions on this. I would make a motion to approve item one of HPCA 2100086 to demolish the garage with the specific findings as noted in the staff report and the condition that the applicant provide a letter from a contractor or engineer describing the condition and with a few additional interior photographs. All right, so we've got a motion by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we've got a second by Commissioner um, Milner. Please vote. All right, so the demol demolition is passed. Do we have a motion for the garage construction? I would make a I would make a motion to approve item two of HPCA twenty one zero 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 eight six to construct uh, the garage with the specific findings in the uh, staff report, and we have the condition has already been met that there would be approval of the demolition. All right, we have motion by Commissioner Meacham. Do we have a second? I 
I'll second Commissioner Poor. Second by Commissioner Poor. Do we have someone who needs to vote still? Commissioner Schultz. All right, you are approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, item eight has been continued. Um, item nine has been continued. So we are on to item 10. HPCA 2100095. This is located at 215 Northwest 25th Street, Jefferson Park, Ward 2. Consideration of possible action on application by Anthony Sharp for a certificate of appropriateness to one, replace all windows of garage elective. Um, you'll notice there are additional items listed in the staff report, but they were not recorded on the agenda, so we can only take action on item one. Uh, the applicant has indicated. Um, he indicated that he wouldn't be able to attend today and that he um, did not intend to provide additional documentation um, as staff had requested and would prefer the commission to either approve or deny the proposed item um, as is. Uh, but depending upon the commission's action today, we will advise him on the additional items and the likelihood of those being approved at a future meeting. All right, thank you, Katie. And I'll ask if the applicant is present, although it appears they are not. Have uh, my fellow commissioners had a chance to review this item? And I guess for, um, as Katie mentioned, this has no more continuances, is that correct? No, this, this is the those? first time that this applicant has been before the commission, um, but they indicated that they did not want a continuance okay just a vote up or down yep. and we can only take action on item one or discuss item one is that correct um that's Rita, correct Yep. Yeah. so that would be item one replace all windows of garage so and it seems like staff is recommending continuance there due to a lack of information, is that correct? Yes, we're missing um, dimensions for the existing windows and the window openings, the proposed windows. Um, there was concern that the proposed material doesn't appear to meet the guidelines for replacement window products and the uh, glass does not appear to meet guidelines related to clear, not tinted or reflective glass. So for me, without that information and without the applicant to be able to defend or discuss the hardships of why they may not be able to provide that, it's going to be hard for me to consider this item for approval. I would agree with that. Any other comments or thoughts from fellow commissioners? So is he asking, we're just considering item one, but we don't have enough information. Correct. Okay. And the other items are going to, this is the end of it or they'll be continued? The other items, because they are not listed on the agenda, cannot be acted upon. So I um, would suggest, oh, yeah, sorry, Katie. I didn't yeah. Mean, oh, so just yeah. we would, we would um, come back to the applicant after this meeting to tell him the status of the first item. And then if he wanted to continue to pursue the other items, we can do that at a future meeting or he could withdraw those. Um, okay. But I don't understand, they're not on the agenda? That's an error on staff's part. We just, we, they were included in the staff report, but they were not listed oh, okay. on, the, on okay. the agenda. So that's, that's I'm like, I don't, <laughs> where did they go? Yeah. Okay, well, uh, I guess, um, so we're denying, is that our only choice? You can approve. Without, well, we don't right. have sufficient information. Right. I wonder if because, uh, some of these other items weren't listed and we weren't able to continue, I mean, to uh, consider them. The might, as a courtesy, we continue the item, give the applicant a chance to come back if they want, and 
if they are not interested, it can always be dropped. I mean, is so. there is there another reason that they wanted that? I mean, was there a reason given? I think they just didn't want to provide any additional information okay. and didn't didn't feel that it was necessary. So they said to just well, I, do an upper I, I would I would make a motion to continue, and then they can do what they want to. If they don't come back, then we'll just. Okay, I would make a motion to continue HPCA 21-000-95, item number one. Is that right? No. August 4th? Uh, to August 4th meeting, yes. I will second that motion. Okay, we've got a motion by Commissioner Meacham and a second by Commissioner Porter. Please vote in prime go. There we go. And that is passed. That takes us to the end of the cases for individual consideration. And we are on to um, let's see here. Other business. And uh, I believe item A has been continued. Yes, item uh, we we do not have because Kloss is the applicant for mm -hmm. item A he would have to recuse on this item, which would leave us without a quorum. So this item will just be moved to our August meeting, uh, and we'll hear that next month. So that leaves us with um, B presentation. Uh, this is at 2522 North Chartel, Paseo, Ward 2. This is an informational presentation only regarding a proposed SPUD and redevelopment of 2522 North Chartel, including the church and parking lot. I should note that there is also another property, um, basically two doors down from the church that will be included in the SPUD. Um, they have now submitted the actual application for the SPUD, and that will be before the commission for a formal recommendation next month. But we talked with the applicant and thought it would be uh, a good idea to do kind of a more informal discussion about what's anticipated for the project, get feedback from the commission on, on what is planned, um, and then have time to, uh, you know, respond to any of those comments before the next meeting and coming in for the recommendation. And I'll note real quick that uh, I am involved in this project as well, but because this is not for individual consideration, I do not need to, or, yeah, because we're not making a decision on this today, I do not need to recuse myself, but I will not comment on the project. So the applicant could state their name and uh, address, and looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Mark Zitzow with Johnson & Associates, 1 East Sheridan Avenue. Uh, we are representing uh, the owner of this property. Um, this is, a, uh, I think, an interesting case. There's an existing church uh, on the hard corner of Chartel and Northwest 25th. Uh, the image, if you, I guess, can I, does this mouse work? Well, I was hoping to go backward. Here we go. Um, scroll. Uh, this picture is actually from Google Street View. The, the, the front portion of the church has fallen into greater disrepair uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, our client it was under contract and has purchased this property. Um, in, a, in an attempt to redevelop this church, they're seeking to also redevelop the parking lot. So. I just quickly wanted to walk through kind of what we were, where we're headed with this project, uh, and given the, the tight timeline on the schedule, get in front of you all in a much more informal way that Katie mentioned, so that we can hear any feedback, potentially address it between now and the August hearing. Here we go. So uh, generally, this is the location. We're just a couple blocks north of 23rd Street. Uh, there are, there's multifamily across the street and caddy corner across the street as well. Uh, so this is by no means uh, introducing multifamily in an area that doesn't have any. Uh, it's unique in that the spud has two parcels that are not attached to each other. This parcel here, if you could see my pointer, this is the, the existing church building and its parking lot. Uh, this is Guernsey, which has been closed and vacated, which has posed a challenge for us. Uh, but we have a solution on how we're working around that. And then there was this parcel that uh, was the same owner and was brought into this SPUD. 
So it's two tracks with two different proposals under the same zoning document. Uh, the zoning currently has the historic overlay, which is why we're here today uh, with the neighborhood conservation. Um, what we're, so Ger here's Guernsey. The alley east-west was closed, as was the north-south section of Guernsey. This was done not by our client, uh, but again, has posed a bit of a unique challenge in uh, having to design where the parking goes and the access to the property. Um, so there are multiple duplexes on 25th, Across the street, I mentioned the, the multifamily. Um, there's eight units directly across the street and four units catty corner to the south, and then four units directly to our north. And so just some background in us looking through this project and kind of helping the, uh, the developer think through you know, what would be ap or appropriate on this property. We started looking at Bike Walk OKC and what other plans were uh, in the works. Chartel in sections of it currently has a, uh, a separated painted bike lane. It's anticipated that this section of Chartel will pick up that bike lane. And so I think there's good, uh, good connectivity. 23rd Street will have a streetscape that is, I think, currently under design. Uh, maybe the preliminary report has been released. Uh, so that it should increase both the bikeability and the walkability of the area. And then maybe one of the biggest changes coming to the area is going to be BRT along Class N. Just being a, you know, a few blocks away, I think that gives an opportunity to have some, um, some higher density uh, without necessarily the need for uh, large, expansive parking lots, uh, given the bike lanes, the walkability of the area, and future BRT. Uh, we believe what we've proposed is also supported by Plan OKC, uh, which is the city's comprehensive plan on guiding development. Um, List of the, the kind of these big ideas of achieving fiscal responsibility, infill development, increasing housing choices. We think that's what this project is, uh, is attempting to do. Uh, ultimately, it falls within the urban medium designation, uh, which is 10 to 40 dwelling units per acre, mixture of densities, maintaining uh, the, you know, the block lengths. We're not proposing to disrupt any of the block lengths. So this is the proposal. Um, maintaining the historic church, to the south of the church, uh, a multifamily building be uh, constructed. Right now it's being proposed as stacked flats uh, with parking in the rear. This is what we are currently working through, which is Guernsey. Uh, when that was vacated, half of the city right away of that street went to the current property owner. The other half went to the adjacent home. It's currently somewhat improved, but it's no longer technically public. So we cannot use it uh, without express permission of uh, this property owner. So it's, it's causing us to redesign this a bit to develop essentially our own alley so that we can access the, the parking in the back. We are proposing parking on the street. As for the track along 25th, uh, this is projected or anticipated uh, to be a fourplex with the parking behind the unit, behind the units. Um, and then we have this is what was provided from the architect as uh, some design inspiration. Ultimately, uh, this SPUD is, uh, it, it has the full requirements and the weight of HP. We're not seeking any, uh, any variances or deviations from that. This, this project will come back for design review and a CA. Um, what we are asking for is essentially the zoning and the land use that would allow for the number of units and the density that um, is being proposed. So, uh, the way it's been described is, you know, this unit right here is actually three. So there will be stacked flats on top of one another. There will be internal staircase, stairwells that uh, access these units. Um, the red brick and the pitched roof is the aesthetic that is, uh, that is being proposed. But again, there will be a lot more detail in terms of brick color, uh, final building height, window placement, uh, and its interaction with the street. Um, We'll back up just for a second. So the, the preservation of the church are, is our client's full intent to, to preserve this building. In order to make that happen and become feasible, this portion of the project has to come first. It's anticipated that when they come in with their CA, they will also be coming in with some mitigation techniques to prevent further deterioration of the church. So that might mean some new windows or a new roof. 
they're, they're seeking to do things that will sure up the building to prevent it from becoming further, you know, I hesitate to use the word dilapidated, but the church is in very rough condition in its current state. Um, if this project is successful and the leasing goes well, it's anticipated that the church may also be uh, redeveloped into some sort of uh, multifamily. In the SPUD, we've allowed for some very light commercial uses like a coffee shop. Given that this is uh, on a bike route, uh, it's feasible something like that could occur. We've also allowed for some uh, art galleries, really low intensity uses in our opinion um, for the hard, for the corner of that. In, in either scenario, I think the upper floors end up becoming residential. That's the developer's intent. That's what uh, they're used to developing uh, and what their background is. So our process here, this is uh, kind of our pre-hearing before you all. Uh, we're going to planning, we'll come back to you August 4th. We'll go to planning commission August 12th and tentatively city council on September 28th pending you know, uh, anything that comes up between then that, that could possibly cause a delay. Once we move forward past the zoning stage, we will uh, move forward with our design CA, submitting all of the architectural drawings and the, the exhibits and the renderings and materials. Um, we will have some technical review for the on-street parking uh, that will go to traffic commission. Uh, we are in the spud. We've outlined that it is our full intent to proceed with that. Uh, but traffic commission will be the, the ultimate approval there uh, for the ADA spaces and, uh, and the design of those. Post that, if there were no changes, uh, we'd move into the building permit stage. Um, ideally, we will be able to start uh, pulling permits probably by the first part of next year, the end of this year, uh, if the timeline holds and we're able to move through design with approval. So, with that, happy to answer any questions or take any feedback on the, the project or the property that you all might have. So Mark, on the alley that's on the south side of the, the large site, and it's marked alley on this picture, it, that one's vacated as well? That one's open. Uh, there are OG&E power lines in it, and there is a bit of a, it's probably a four foot grade difference from our property. So, it's certainly not out of the question if we're not able to make this alley work uh, that we look at this, but it's certainly more challenging with the electrical lines that are in it. I had a question in regards to the uses. So, um, if you're so you're, you're saying that you want to keep the option to do commercial in the church building. That, that's correct. And so would there, is this an area, so are you also asking then to um, reduce or whatever it would take as far as parking because you might not have the parking that would normally be associated with that? So. Um, that, that is correct. Within the SPUD, we have uh, created some, I would say, custom parking regulations uh, where I think uh, it was one per bedroom is required, or right. sorry, one per unit for the residential, and I believe it was one per 350 square feet of commercial. Okay. Because, I mean, I would compare this project if you were going to go forward with retail to the Red Cup. And I don't know if you're familiar with that particular coffee shop, but it is located in a neighborhood. And the impact of parking, while uh, uh, great for customers, I think is a good example of what happens in a neighborhood where, uh, you know, on a daily basis, the, the parking in the street is severely impacted by the addition of that type of facility. I think they're great. I'm not against it. I'm just saying that if that would happen, I think that that would be very detrimental to the people on 25th Street because what happens over at the Red Cup on 34th or whatever street that is, 32nd, I mean, it goes almost a block or a block and a half in most days all the way from 8 in the morning till 3 o'clock. So I would be concerned about... Um, adding that to that specific corner. I mean, that, that would be my comment on that. 
And the other comment I have, is there a, um, uh, is there any way that, that the project would go a direction that would require the demolition of the church? In its current configuration, that is not being envisioned. Um, I don't, I, I can't stand here and guarantee that no one in the future will come forward with a demolition permit, but the current owner, his path to saving that church is the construction of the multifamily. Because there's been, I can name three projects that were started in Oklahoma City with a, with a building in similar condition where the building fell in before the project got started. And so I would have a concern on what would happen there. I guess we would just, we would, if, I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, getting a demolition, you would have to, I don't know at that point if it fell in that you would have to then come back and get a demolition. Uh, permit to complete the demolition, but um, that, that was a question also. Anyway, th those are my comments. We will certainly uh, go out and look at, at Red Cup. Um, I would add that if, uh, if that did become uh, commercial, what you would likely see is some additional on-street parking along 25th to help uh, but, I mean, it doesn't really space. matter how much parking you get. That parking is taken away from people. And, and in this area, I don't know if there are, but I can look. I'm seeing one, the house next to your other project. It would appear that that house has a shared driveway, possibly. Can't really tell from your picture. But there are some houses over there that don't have any parking, uh, that don't have a, a driveway. So they're limited to on-street parking. So. I would just say that you might want to check on that because uh, if it was popular, uh, then the impact, I think, could be detrimental to that particular street. I have a question. Has the owner or anybody in your group met with the neighborhood association? Uh, not to this point. The application I think, was filed right. two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, not to this point. I think public notice will be sent out uh, probably in the You know, I think public weeks. notice is really important, but I also think it's important that the owner make the attempt to visit with neighbors in that area, especially with three of these items being four, eating establishment, fast food, sit down, sit down, alcohol permitted. I'm glad Mary Jo Meacham brought it up because I would as well. Some people just don't fully understand what the uses are and how they come in in that 300 foot radius. So I just really want to encourage, because I would continue to ask that question again and again and again, if an attempt has been made to meet with the neighborhood association and explain to them what's coming um, for this project. Understood. And I'll, I'll add sometimes, because the fast food use unit, you're correct. I think people hear that and think McDonald's. Uh, within the zoning code, there are two types of fast food uses. One is fast food that would be without a drive-through. That you'd, that's a, like a point of ordering. You'd walk in. It's like a Zoe's Kitchen, uh, Jersey Mike's. That's considered fast food, but there's no drive-through associated. And so that's what we're seeking. Sure. It would not be sure. uh, a sort of fast food that would allow for any sort of drive-through use. Right. Mark, I had a question for you about the how the bike lane impacts the anticipated bike lane anticipate or impacts your on-street parking. How does that work? So that's one of the design elements we're still working through. Okay. What did you say that was proposed to your? Uh, I believe it was protected bike? or sorry, separated, but not protected okay. in this section. Protected bike lane. Right. Okay. I'll add the legend. I'm trying to remember if yellow is the protected or just the separated. Yeah, if it's protected, that's going to be a challenge on right. reversing it, out of that. Mm -hmm. If it's protected, I, we think that there may be enough room to provide an easement to where, um, i trying to think where we've done this. On the streetcar route, the bike lane goes behind the pickup and around. So we think there are some, some ways to accomplish it, but all that will come back with final plans. Uh, staff would just be, be happy to hear if there are any additional comments from the commission to kind of guide our discussion with the applicant and you know crafting the staff report as we go forward on, on the, the level of density that's proposed, you know, from, from meeting with the applicant so far, 
This is an area where we historically had lots of multifamily. Um, Chartel was a streetcar line um, historically, so there's a lot of, of good reason there to add um, more than just a single family home in this area. Um, we have a you know, large church next door, so I think um, a larger building um, can, can be done in an appropriate scale on that site and, and not feel out of proportion with the surrounding neighborhood. But um, if the commission has any feedback beyond that for, for staff or for the applicant on, on the pro proposal. I would just go back to parking because you're saying that you're asking for a uh, reduced amount per apartment. Is that correct? Yes, we are. When, when in reality, we know that most of those apartments will have two people and we really can't depend on people just to be uh, bus riders or bike riders. I just, I, I do think it's kind of a tender area right there. It's a very uh, narrow street and, um, you know, I, I don't think it's fair to, I mean, when you say uh, reduced and it's in Midtown, that's one thing because you know, you're know you not impacting everybody's daily life and how they get groceries to their house. But when you say we're not gonna have enough parking for everybody, which is what we're, it, I think would happen, is that then they're gonna park on the street and you can already see people park on the street. And so the other is the single car driveway also presents a problem in that you can't, you know, even if you have a single car driveway, it's the moving of the car every day. So some people, you know, park behind somebody else, but the reality is most of the time one car is in the street. So, I mean, these kind of streets tend to have a lot of evening cars on them. And so if you put another 10, I mean, even if you added 10 cars, you know, everybody's gonna park as close as they want. It's just, that's, I'm, I'm in agreement with uh, John, you know, that I, I would be proactive in trying to notify people and um, around that area because um, the parking would be one thing that if you lived there, you would be annoyed if every day you came home and there was somebody parked in front of your house, which people feel like is really their parking spot. And so then you're parking two people in your single car driveway and then every morning you're getting up and moving because somebody is in your spot. And I know that the street is the street, but that's not how people feel like in the neighborhood. They feel like the, 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 you know, the grass in front of their house plus that parking lot kind of belongs to them in places like this. So um, I, I would just still stick with the, the parking. I, I, the density is not the problem, but when the parking becomes a problem to people that already live there, I feel like that can be a problem. I appreciate those comments. We'll certainly look at the at the parking. The, the developer feels that one per unit is adequate for uh, for the tenants that he believes he's going after. I think personally, you on sites like this, particularly in the core, you, you run into a bit of a uh, an interesting dilemma in that you want to achieve density, you want to create a better street frontage, you want to do these things but then you have parking that detracts from all of that. And so it almost becomes if you, if, if you reduce the units, well then you don't need as much parking. But if you add it, you have to remove units to add parking. So it's a, a bit of just an interesting conundrum of, of you're trying to balance, right. do we feel we, we're providing enough? Right. For, I mean, I agree, I'm just saying people already live there. So you're impacting people that are already investing in, you know, in a historic neighborhood and living there. And so you're, in my opinion, you're taking some, it's possible that you could actually take something away from the people that already live there. And that, that seems unfair to achieve your goal. It's not their goal. I'm not, their goal is not maybe they don't care if other people live there. They just feel like that if there's cars and people in Oklahoma, maybe in Chicago it's different, or maybe in lots of other places, but in Oklahoma, you know, we feel pretty dedicated to our cars. And so, you know, then you have a house and you have two people and a teenager, then they have three cars. I mean, it's just parking is, it's a reality and trying to get there with Oklahoma weather and groceries and all of that kind of stuff. I think that you just have to realize there are other people that you have to live with, that you have neighbors and you wanna be neighborly. We are certainly hopeful that the installation of the BRT and continued installation of bike lanes will certainly reduce the 
the amount of vehicles that, that are on, uh, on the public streets. You'd like to think that, but I, I ride a bike as much or more than anybody in this town. And I can tell you, there's just still a small minority of us out there riding bikes. And there's only a small minority of the days of the week. And I mean, we have another big bike rider on the commission. And I mean, yes, you can ride, but you know, you just can't depend on, unless you tell people, we only rent to people that ride bikes or not everybody can have two or whatever. It's just, it could be an imposition. That's, that's all I'm saying. Um, one other thing that I, I, I'll address that, that you mentioned, the, the one-way drive, the way we're envisioning uh, the parking off of Guernsey to work here uh, is it's one way in and one way out. Guernsey south of here is open and somewhat improved. Uh, so, you know, the, these spaces may change to be angled um, so that you're backing out into the drive aisle and leaving, but those are still some of the things that we're, we're tweaking and hoping to address but, and, and have to you all by the next time we, we're here, but definitely by the time we file for RCA. I think the only item, well, yeah, right now is just the four items in here on the allowed uses that are eating establishments. I think those are the items I would just be most concerned about. Uh, you know, I heard you say there could be a little art gallery, there could be a little retail sales. The, the traffic to art galleries and retail sales is completely different than eating establishments, even in the hours that people are frequenting those. Um, and it would be my hope that whatever proprietor would open up would do amazing and do really well. And I think that could have some adverse effects to um, the surrounding, I'm not even going to say traffic path, I'm, I'm just saying that to, to those people living around in that area. And why I'm sympathetic is because the developer will go and build it and I'm sure is going to do a, a great job. I, I have no doubt this is going to look fantastic. But it's that proprietor in that, that building, in my experience in the Plaza District, where people come in and they complain. There's too much parking. This person's parking in front of me. This is the, I live here, and they're parking. It's all on that proprietor. So I don't know how much we can comment on that, but it's just it's just the, the allowing uses of eating establishment um, for where this is located it just makes me nervous. Thank. You. We will certainly review that with our client. I think the intent there is really to provide the most flexible zoning in an effort to preserve the church, and so if. If after the apartments are built and, and he's looking and running through performas and figuring out how he can actually save the structure and the building, and it means that it might be a small cafe or it might be an art gallery or whatever the case may be, that's the that's the attempt there. Um, you know, if we'll talk to him and see how firm he feels on those uses, it, it may just be a, a situation where. Um, if, if they end up getting removed through this process and that happens, when that time comes, he may just come through with a spud uh, just for that individual piece again, uh, seeking a specific user. I just want you to know I appreciate you talking to him about it. Yeah. Because, I, I, I'm, like I said, I have no doubt the, the project will be great. But I'm also advocating for some the residents that live in that area who I've seen it happen in my neighborhood don't know how to read a spud when it arrives to them in the mail. Um, so thank you. I have one final uh, question and comment. So I don't know if we, uh, did you actually say how many units this is, you're, you're anticipating for a residential? Within the, the new structure, uh, it'd be 15 units. Between the two? Within the, well, just the, the new structure, sorry, the new structure south of the church is 15, and then uh, potentially up to a fourplex. And then my comment is just looking at the one that may be the fourplex is just that the front facade doesn't quite match the existing. It's kind of shoved back, so that would be a concern of mine potentially. Right, I think that was a graphical error on our part. We try and push it uh, closer generally, so we will we'll correct that. All right, are those final comments? All right, well, thank you, Mr. Zizal, for your presentation. And I guess we'll see this uh, at the next meeting. Thank you all for your time. Yep. So that is uh, other business. We're on to communications and reports. Uh, you see a number of administrative approvals listed. Um, staff's always happy to provide more information on, on those. Um, you know, if you 
contact us if you have questions about things that are getting administratively approved. Um, those are also posted online so you can review those. Uh, we had one withdrawal um, of an application um, that didn't move forward. No administrative closings to report and nothing from city council or board of adjustment. Um, we didn't put it on the agenda, but we did review a SPUD at the previous HP commission meeting, and that did go to planning commission subsequently and was recommended for approval um, to go on to city council. This was the one with the two-story garage. We had lots of discussion about the size of the garage. Planning commission also had lots of discussion about the size of the garage and the way in which that could be addressed within an SPUD versus um, under the purview of the HP Commission. Um, so that'll move on to City Council. So what was the final decision then? So they, they approved it with the, um, without any changes to the SPUD. Um, so with, without removing that allowance for the square footage. Um, with some input from the Municipal Counselor's Office that HP Commission may still retain purview over that um, limitation, but I, I think that'll be something for further discussion as it moves forward to City Council. So, um, and I actually, I don't know if Mark already walked out. I'm not sure when that goes to Council, but we can get check that date. Um. All right, anything from the Municipal Counselor? No, thank you. Okay, uh, next meeting date. Looks like the uh, next regularly scheduled meeting for the Historic Preservation Commission is Wednesday, August 4th, 2021 at 2 p.m. at the Municipal Building City Council Chamber. New applications for this meeting were received July 6th, 2021. New information and projects continued from today's meeting to the upcoming meeting must be submitted to staff by 4 p.m. Tuesday, July 13th, 2021. And the next regularly scheduled workshop for the Historic Preservation Commission is Wednesday, September 8th, 2021, from 11.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. at 420 West Main Street, Suite 900. Any items from commissioners? Any citizens to be heard? Does not appear so. Um, we are adjourned.